So good, good morning everyone. Thanks for attending this uh, press conference. It's for the 2022 Adelaide Royal Show. Uh, this uh, press conference is about the Royal Show. Um, so I'll take uh, questions um, at the end of this press conference about anything you want to hear more about. So we're anticipating that the, this year's Royal Show will be uh, really well attended for a couple of reasons. First of all, because the show hasn't been run for the last two years. And secondly, it looks like the forecasted weather will be quite favourable. Um, police will be providing a presence again this year at the show in the form of uh, uniform policing, plain clothes patrols, uh, bicycle patrols, um, mounted operations, so uh, horses, and also our police dogs. And they'll be there to, um, to reassure and protect people about um, crime and try and prevent crime and they'll be there for members of the public to speak to and engage with uh, throughout the duration of the show. Uh, there'll be three aspects to the uh, policing response at the show for this year and uh, they are first of all the prevention of theft, uh, road safety and the third one is about reuniting missing persons or children in particular uh, with their parents or carers. Uh, first of all in relation to preventing theft um, I suggest that all members of the public attending the show be conscious of the security of their uh, wallet, purse, mobile phone and any purchases that they, that they make such as um, show bags, I suggest they don't leave them unattended. So we want, what we want to do is reduce the opportunities for theft. Uh, secondly, on the aspect of road safety, um, as with all uh, rural shows, there will be a huge amount of an increase in traffic around the showgrounds on the outskirts. And we're looking at an increase in vehicle traffic and also pedestrian traffic. And we need to put measures in place to make sure members of the public are safe. So what we're going to do is implement a 25 km hour speed restriction on roads surrounding the show. And I ask that motorists abide by um, that speed limit and we'll be putting uh, police traffic resources in the streets to make sure people do comply. But I ask for people to do the right thing and ensure the safety of uh, all road users. Also, um, I want to let you know that the traffic restrictions will be in place for every day of the show between 9am and 11pm, so for the whole nine days of the show. I ask that uh, pedestrians cross at pedestrian crossings and also by, by tra traffic signals, pedestrian signals as well, in order to stay safe. We all have to keep in mind that there will be a lot of uh, young, excited people who may not have been to the show before, who are keen to get to that show bag stand and might not be uh, paying attention to their, their safety when crossing the road. So I ask that adults and carers make sure that they uh, have a chat to their, the kids that they're responsible for uh, in order to t talk about road safety to, to help them uh, become safe and arrive safely at the show. Uh, the third aspect is uh, the, the topic of missing persons. So children that um, get lost during the show, we've obviously got a huge build up of, um, of visitors at the show, it's a very busy place, very easy for uh, children to be um, um, to wander off away from their parents and carers and get lost. So we really need to uh, put some measures in place to first of all make sure that they don't get lost in the first place. So I suggest parents and carers have a chat to their kids uh, to talk about uh, measures that can prevent them from getting disconnected with their, um, with their parents and their carers. Uh, secondly, if they do, I suggest uh, everyone has a plan in place and that is uh, to agree on a pre-arranged meeting location uh, should the, the family become disconnected physically uh, to identify a place within the show uh, where they should go. Uh, ideally, they would find a police officer and ask for assistance if they're missing. Um, secondly, there could be something as big as uh, the Ferris wheel to meet at the bottom of that, for example, um, and then, um, then uh, they would Oh, they would be able to uh, speak to police when they walk past the first wheel. Uh, there's uh, also an initiative that the show has had in place for a number of years and that's about um, uh, bands, wristbands, that um, children, I suggest, all have um, them put on their wrists. Uh, it's a matter of uh, the parent or carer adding their name to the wristband along with their mobile phone number 
so that should they become uh, missing, uh, they can be quickly reunited um, with their parents. I also suggest that um, upon uh, or prior to entering the showgrounds, that parents or carers take a photograph of each of their children who are entering the show, just so they can show the police what the children are wearing, should they go missing, and also we can have a look at uh, their other uh, their description as well, and we can that'll help us locate children uh, in a much more uh, timely manner. Um, so if uh, showgoers witness any offending, any antisocial behaviour or anything that concerns them, uh, I suggest they um, approach a police officer and report such matters immediately or ring 131444 or in the case of an emergency to ring 000. So SAPO will be again providing a corporate display within the Jubilee Pavilion. Um, it's an opportunity for members of the public to engage with police, to talk about things like um, whether they would like to or inquire about whether they'd like to work for SAPO, uh, about how to report crime, uh, about cyber crime, and there's also an interactive uh, display uh, that they can uh, um, be engaged with. Also, there'll be um, a road safety dog will be in attendance as well, uh, and if they're lucky, uh, they will be able to see the road safety dog. Uh, also, the band of the South Australian Police uh, will be playing during various sessions uh, throughout the duration of the show. So it's an opportunity to uh, have a listen to the police band, um, including uh, marching through the showgrounds. Uh, on the Friday, the 9th of September there will be a presentation um, in relation to the Police Officer of the Year and uh, so that announcement of the winner will be announced during the show. So um, that's, uh, I'll hand, now hand over to Mr Rothwell. Thanks. I will at the end if you like. Good morning everyone. Uh, very special year this year. The, uh, it's going to be the 245th Royal Adelaide Show. Uh, we've had 245 since 1840. It's quite unbelievable. In some years there used to be two Royal Shows. We currently have one Royal Show. It's an amazing number of events and that's the highest in Australia, national. Um, special year because we've missed the show. It's effectively three years since the last show was here. And of course we missed two due to COVID. Um, we have a lot of interest from entries as in competition through our livestock and all through the different uh, human endeavours. We also have a high level of um, interest from commercial exhibitors so we've got some wonderful displays um, and we also are looking forward to the large number of public. We've already had a lot of ticket sales and uh, we have a range of options for people in terms of buying tickets uh, with discounting in particular focused on weekdays which will mean we'll get a more even spread across the show of our attendees. This year we have the uh, National Alpaca um, competition which is quite a feat so we have the selection of the best alpacas from around Australia all here on show in South Australia. They're very popular particularly with members of the public um, we also have an absolutely fantastic entertainment program. Um, the, the usual favourites, but it's been boosted by an increase in local artists who were very much um, a part of the groups of uh, business and individuals who missed out with employment during COVID. So it's a wonderful opportunity for them to be here performing, including our Indigenous uh, talent as well. We look forward to uh, very good weather. From what I see at the moment, we get all the way through to about next Wednesday, Thursday. We then have a few showers of rain. So I think everything's smiling on us to have an absolutely wonderful 2022 show. Good. 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 How many have been sold so far and what are the numbers that you are expecting this year? Well, ticket number, I mean they're being sold all the time and the numbers are being updated. But we're talking of tens of thousands have already been sold and we expect somewhere in the order of 450 to 500,000, just under a million attendees. That'll come down, of course, to some degree with weather, but for everyone who comes, of course, there are other options. We have so much 
undercover space today compared to many years ago when you were more vulnerable to the weather. So it's a really good option to come on the wetter days when you get a uh, much better look around the display. John, are you expecting a record though this year, given the fact it has been a three year gap since the last show? Well, I think it's just a record to put on a show. I mean, we actually had it ready to go and we were three and a half weeks out and uh, we couldn't go ahead. So um, it's hard to know what the record might be, but certainly on some of our competitions, for example, the wood cutting, absolutely phenomenal numbers. So we're delighted. In terms of agriculture, are there any around foot and mouth disease? Well, there is no foot and mouth disease in Australia. But what we've decided to do is to put some um, examples of the right sort of protocols for, for controlling disease, uh, biosecurity, and demonstrating them here at the show. So at, at the entries, we'll actually have foot mat, mats where you walk through, and uh, also there'll be uh, buckets and scrubbing brushes for any exhibitors in particular, or any individuals who want to wash their, their, uh, their boots. Um, of course, um, the important thing, anyone coming to the show any year should always come in clean clothes and clean boots because we want to maintain our biosecurity levels. You mentioned obviously the impact of COVID over the past um, few years being cancelled. Were there any measures in place um, to, to keep people safe in that sense and maybe still look around? Yes, the, in terms of COVID we've actually maintained the layout of the pavilions as we had them prepared for last year. So it provides a little bit more space, more comfort for everyone and better security with COVID or any other sort of flu or, or uh, condition that people might have. But if you're not well, you're better off staying at home. What are you most excited about? Oh, I think probably the new horse precinct. So um, three years ago, just before COVID, we had finished what was to be a brand new demountable horse stable section and that is in play today but over the last three years or two and a half years since COVID it's been operating as a caravan park very successfully and uh, in May 2024 it will turn into being the site for Circus Soleil. So it's a wonderful example of maximum utilisation of space. And obviously the countdown is on now. Um you know, We're talking about <laughs> <laughs> on the countdown, so yes, very much so. And we already have exhibitors here. We have a lot of students here today with their steers, having prepared them in the schools to come in and compete. It's an absolutely wonderful program. We have a similar program with lead weathers, um, that's sheep, and also with goats, whereby our schools, regional schools, and even city schools who have agriculture as part of their course, are able to compete. Uh, they bring in three animals each and they line them up against other schools. What is your message to showgoers and those that haven't potentially maybe bought their tickets yet? Well, I think the message is, this is the reunion post-COVID. We'd like everyone to come back, enjoy the wonderful elements of the show. Um, it's a fantastic event. We take it, for example, uh, for, um, just take it uh, as wallpaper effectively in South Australia and, and don't really appreciate the standard of what we have internationally, not just nationally, but internationally. So come out and enjoy an absolutely wonderful event with many things for everyone right across the board. How many people are involved in putting the show together, working on the day? Uh, we're talking of thousands, um, just under the 10,000 mark in terms of people here, whether it's looking up the security, the cleaning, the catering, all those various elements, also with the judging and stewarding. Uh, it's a massive task and it's actually 18 months of planning in the show. This one's been for nearly three years. Haven't had the other two. Not that we're bitter about it, we're over. <laughs> we're on. Yep. Uh, what I might do is I'll just uh, touch again on um, uh, children that uh, have gone missing at the show. Um, in 2018 we um, reunited 61 uh, children with their parents and caregivers so just to give you an idea that it's a fairly uh, common uh, thing to occur and in the last, the last year we ran at the show in 2019 there was 40 um, children reunited with their parents or caregivers so it is um, a, a big big issue for um, 
for, for policing and also for parents. So it's an important thing to keep in mind is about prevention and then action should the children go missing. What I might do is I uh, might just get you to f um, focus in on this uh, just so we can... Okay. Right. Yep. Peter, will you be using drug sniffing dogs here at the show? Uh, there's no intention to do that on this occasion. Why not? Why is that? Uh, it's just a decision being made uh, that we're not... Um, we, we have the ability to do that, but uh, we're not at, at this time. In terms of police presence, how does it compare to previous show years? Uh, very consistent. Yep. Probably have um, more plain clothes officers um, in uh, looking around in the crowd, making observations and calling in other police. So that's um, a tactic that's, um, uh, that we'll be relying on. Uh, like spotters and that's why uh, we'd like the uh, members of the public to let us know if they see anything suspicious um, so that we can get spotters and uh, we can get uniformed pe people into the area at the time so the uniformed police in uh, and the, the plainclothes spotters uh, to respond to anything that we need to. What is your message to potentially misbehaving showgirls this year? Your message, sorry? Okay, so my message to showgoers who um, are here to commit offences or disorderly type behaviour is that uh, we'll be keeping an eye on you and um, we'll be taking action. Uh, that would also include evicting or potentially arresting them. You touched on theft, how much of an issue has that been in the past? Uh, there's regularly thefts at the show, unfortunately. Uh, it's a case of, um, it's an opportunistic type crime because there's so many potential victims here uh, carrying a large amount of money in their purse or wallet. Uh, probably not so much as previous years because we're used to using credit cards, uh, but st people still carry cash, so it's still an issue. Uh, mobile phones is a bigger issue. Is any form of sort of um, card skimming or anything like that a concern as well? Because, you know, not necessarily having cash, but um, the cards... I'm, I'm not aware of any occasions uh, previously at the show. And just how many officers will you sort of be having on, on the ground? Um... Okay, so that's um, uh, depending on if we have an incident. If we have an incident, we've got the capability to call in additional officers, uh, whether they be detectives or uniform members, uh, can come in and to support the members who are actually working in the showground. So, and that also varies uh, per shift uh, as well. So you'll find there'll be more officers working uh, during the later hours um, and not so many in the beginning, but there'll always be police officers here uh, from the opening to the closing of the show every day. Can I just ask you about an overnight incident, a boy uh, hit by an, uh, sorry, that fell off of an e-scooter. Do we have an update on his condition and also what's the message to people who ride these without wearing helmets? Okay, so I don't have the specifics of that event uh, my message is uh, to be careful if you're riding a e-scooter, I believe it was, and to always wear a helmet. Um, and uh, I, I'm not able to give an update at this time, but um, police media would be able to. Just in terms of the dangers of that though, I guess not having sort of protection, just how um, dangerous can that be and, and you know, suffer the, the consequences of it really if you do come off? Yeah, it can be quite dangerous, um, particularly when they're ridden at speed. Um, and they can uh, flip forward quite easily. And like I said, if you don't wear a helmet, really putting themselves at risk. Um, one more on that, sorry. Uh, E-skateboard, that was my apologies. Uh, it's apparently illegal to ride them on the roads. Is it a case where there could be charges? Yeah, there may well be. I'm not familiar with that particular event. There, um, there's a, an investigation currently underway that will determine whether there will be charges and if so, what charges? Thanks, everyone. Okay. Thank you. Good.